Before we get started, there's something you should know about the Cho Nilla podcast. We like to cuss. And if you don't want your kids to hear it, then listen to us when they're not around. But if you don't mind your kids listening to grown folks talk, then turn this shit up and let the show begin. That is that is Drake's dad. Yes. How did you know? I saw that's his face. How did you know? I recognize his face. If I, I'm going if for I, a while. If I'm I didn't look at the video, it, I'm making I wouldn't know it's him. Calling me, asking me where I'm at. I'm out here doing it. That's that on that. That's that Listen on me that. Off. Checking on me like GPS, trying to see where I'll be. Going through my phone, reading Whoa, my text. Wait. Got me thinking what she's going to do next. I can't sleep at night without yeah, sleep at night. Open. When I'm in the other room, I can Why hear them tiptoeing. They go to the door with a styrofoam cup. A detective from the cage about to lock me up. I can't go anywhere the without her on my back. If the door's wide open, she's peeping through the crack. Calling on my phone, want to know where I'm at. I'm where I'm at. Trying and to catch that's the that on that. Peeping through the window. Calling me on the phone, constantly leaving messages, won't leave me alone. That's that on that. Leave alone. That's that on that. That's that on that, baby. That's that on that. Oh my gosh. Just a few rewrites. Gotta let you know just how I feel. Why she stalking him? Whoa, I heard that bitch. That was bad. All the time I'm going Did he just say Aubrey? <laughs> I need some studio time, man. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, everybody, I'm Clove. And I am Shirley, aka Wonder Girl. Wonder Girl. Do you know who Wonder Girl is? Wonder Girl, that's my girlfriend, Wonder Girl. <laughs> Wonder Girl is actually a Brampton born producer. Her real name is Ebony Asharunde. I hope I'm saying it right. I thought you were Wonder Girl. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Wonder Girl. <laughs> The real one. <laughs> um, she got her big break um, when she was 16 years old. She sent a track to Travis Scott, um, and it ended up in the hands of Jay Z, which he used her track on one of his uh, things there. I don't know which song in particular, but that's one. Okay, so 16. But he just used her music. Well, How obviously, that obviously she got paid. Did she though? Yeah. Of Did she though? <laughs> She, yes, yes. Now she does. She's like, you know, a grown producer. So do your thing, girl. Do your music thing. <laughs> Speaking of music. You're I... listening to the Chonilla Podcast. Yeah, it is. It's a personal comedy journal of an interracial couple who explores the world from different perspectives and experiences. <gasps> <laughs> it's a lot. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. And we are recording on Saturday, September 14th at 3.40 p.m. On motherfucking Eastern time. That's right. That is correct. Mm-hmm. So, are you ready for your word of the day? Yes. Okay. I was like, what's the word of the day? It's like, I'm not getting anything. <laughs> well, why would I? You're going to Google it. No, I wouldn't have Googled it. <laughs> yes, you would have. No, I like, oh. I like to play the game. I don't cheat. Okay. See how cheaters think? Yes. <laughs> they you, you, got that. you got me. You got me. So the word is proscenium. Proscenium. Mm-hmm. Proscenium. Here it is in context. Wait, I'm trying to think of a word that might be sim- similar to proscen- proscenium, you said. Okay. I don't know why I thought thought Prometheus, but that's not related. <laughs> Proscenium. Something, it's some kind of an element? Well, let me read this, and then maybe it'll help you. Okay. Okay? The action or storyline occurs on stage under Proscenium Arch. Under the Proscenium Arch. And the audience becomes the fourth wall, eavesdropping on the lives of the characters. It's an... It's a... Actors' action of looking at 
the audience, like a monologue kind of thing. I have no I'll idea. read it again because I stumbled through it. Okay. <laughs> the action or storyline occurs on stage under the proscenium arch, and the audience becomes the fourth wall eavesdropping on the lives of the characters. I, I don't know. Some kind of an action during... It's a moment in theater. Proscenium. It's, very close. You're getting closer. It's a moment where the person is looking, is like doing a monologue or looking at the people. Theater nerds are losing their minds right now. <laughs> They're like, oh! Just tell her what it is already. It's a moment before the intro and the, me and the middle part. It's actually a place. Oh, no, no. Around the... Okay, it's a place. It's a place. Okay. Okay, so proscenium is... Oh, I know. It's when the stage people move things. <laughs> okay, you don't, you don't want to know what it is. Yeah, I do. I just try to piss <laughs> off, like, the theater nerds. It's the part of the theater stage in front of the curtain. It's the part of yes. the theater stage in front of the curtain. Okay. Proscenium. The part of a theater stage in front of the curtain. In front of the curtain. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's a place. Got it. Right in front of the curtain. Just call it right in front of the curtain. Sounds good. <laughs> so what's up? What do you Will got I going ever on? use that word? Absolutely not. No? You don't mm -mm. think you'll be in a stage setting? You need to be in front of the, like, be in the proscenium. Yes, please. Please step into the proscenium. At least if somebody says that, mm -hmm. I will impress a theater nerd. Yes. <laughs> They're like, oh, you do theater? Damn. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? Sorry. I was just asking you how your week was. My week was good, actually. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's been productive. I feel like I'm making some good moves. And um, I don't know if some, some of y'all know, but I'm like working part time as I'm moonlighting uh the other time not kidding what is moonlighting that means i'm being a prostitute right i don't know <laughs> i don't think so because <laughs> i'm think, like what if i said that and people were like oh my god she's a prostitute <laughs> i think um i think it might just mean you're working at night, night i think yeah. so too <laughs> i don't know i think it is like working at night <laughs> um no, like I'm, I've been, it's been nice. Like I've, I, you know, working part, part time as I'm working part time with Chonilla and some other projects. And so I feel like, oh, I'm like getting into the groove, you know? So it's been nice. I'm, you know, trying to balance because, you know, just trying to balance. Yeah. Yeah. It, moonlighting just means having a second job. Okay. There yep. you go. So I am. Yeah. There you go. You're, yeah. on that, you're that moonlighter. But other than that, it's been good. How about you? Been pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, it's been uh, an amazing first week of work. Yes. Um, now working full Is this time. Is your second week? Second. Well, no, my first week just, my first full week just ended. Oh, it's my it. second week, but I started on Friday of the previous oh, week. Oh, so. right, right, right. Okay, first full so, week. It's okay. great. It's like you right like, up my alley. Yeah. It's like everything I was trained in. It's just all like coming back. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 So you're like back in like full animation, doing animation, making animation, creating yes. animation. Yes. Making things move. Correct. And then also you surprise me that you guys do push-ups. Yeah, every day. <laughs> every day we're doing push-ups. At 2.30, uh, our lead comes around and she's like, all right, push-up time. And uh, yeah, we just do as many push-ups as we can. Is your lead like a workout, workout nerd? No, no. Just a kind of like a health guy, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Is he like? In shape and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'll leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, actually, yesterday was kind of, uh, I felt like I ran around a lot today, but yesterday, but I didn't. I winded up, I was telling you mm -hmm. that. <laughs> so here's the thing. So uh, I've been back into listening to more podcasts. Okay. Actually, I've always been listening to podcasts, but... So I launched a show. I'm terrible. I never listen to podcasts. So I launched a show called that's our, you know, first kind of Chilnilla Network production, part of the Chilnilla Network, which is Black Canadian content creators. Yes. And it's an amazing podcast. So I can show, you know, to help showcase that there are digital content creators of the mel the melanated kind mm -hmm. who are making great content awesome. online and or even offline. Right. So it's all about showcasing Creativity and creators. Anywho, um, 
where was I going? Oh, so because of that, I it's like, you know, I'm finding myself, I'm l- trying to discover fellow, you know, podcasters, bloggers, you know, filmmakers, photographers, yes. things like that. Mm-hmm. So I've been listening to a lot more new podcasts outside of my usual podcast routine. Yeah. And, um, and so <laughs> I was listening to one podcast. Uh-oh. I- it was laugh. I was <laughs> laughing, not at like okay, not this. Sh- okay, <laughs> it was something that I the person didn't realize they d- were doing that had me a little bit cracked up. Okay, you know what I mean. Like you tell me a story. D- okay, just right now. Yeah, just whatever. Okay, uh, I walked out to uh, the front of the lobby there, and lobby. I saw I saw two guys, two, and they were two guys, huh? Oh, <laughs> 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 that's the worst. That is the worst. The worst. The worst. The worst. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was so cute. It wasn't worse. It was like not realizing, mm-hmm. you know. And I just. I don't know. My brain was like, I didn't want, I, I, I wanted to do it to you to see if not say anything and oh just my do God. it. Just to see. <laughs> I would have rolled with it and just looked at you like, what's going on? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> yeah. Where did this technique come from? Technique. <laughs> did you read another podcasting book? <laughs> Books are mm, good, huh? Yeah, podcasting book. <laughs> but I was just thinking, like, I feel like I'm listening to a Missy Elliott podcast because Missy Elliott does this a lot. Right. If you, I'm going to ruin you now. Now, when you listen to a Missy Elliott song, yeah, she does this a lot where um, in her song she repeats. Okay. You know? <laughs> um, so it just made me think of that. Anywho. Okay. <laughs> and what else? Oh, so I went to Real Fruit, mm-hmm. and I got my so. Have you so basically Re- Real Fruit's like a? Mm, I'm trying to think of a famous place. Oh, they make like 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 uh, smoothies, like fresh, you know, fruit, freshly cut type of smoothies. They do bubble teas. They do slushies, like all with. You know, with okay. green tea, different type of green tea flavors, really, really good. So flavor explosions. Flavor explosions. And then the best part is you can, like, put these, like, different kind of chunks. You could do mango chunks at the bottom. You could have tapioca at the bottom. You could have – look at your face when I said tapioca. Yeah. I don't understand it, too. I don't, I don't get, get it. it. I don't like the texture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I feel like it's work. What do you mean? Like- I feel like bubble tea is work. Like just to chew it? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know? So <laughs> or my favorite is the lechi chunks. Oh yeah. so good. The thing is the thing is with me and bubble tea, like I, I go out with some people sometimes and we'll go to like uh, little Korea in Toronto and um or Koreatown. And uh you know, and afterwards the group usually wants to go get some bubble tea and I'm just like, yeah. I'm not, and the thing is with bubble tea, like when I've had it, I guess it first came out, right? And I just like the the little Those balls, little yeah, tapioca balls, ta- tapioca balls, just like flying up through the straw was like, I can't do this, it's, I can't, yeah, you know what I mean? And the thing is, it ruined the taste for me, yeah. So it's like now because they tell me like, oh, you can get it without those, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I guess I could. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but no, I'm good. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know what? That's a good point. It's true. <laughs> it's just my brain. Yeah. I know it. <laughs> um. So the so as I was making an order, they the the bartender had like music playing, and it was like you know Spanish music. I don't know. Okay. It was good music, <laughs> but it was so loud mm-hmm. that I couldn't finish my order like my ear kept going to the sound and i just couldn't like it was getting on my nerves right right, right. and so i said to the girl I, is just, it because you were sort of feeling it and you're sort of like getting into it and you know it was fighting for your attention because it was kind of good yeah okay. like my ears was like what was that and i'm like my brain is like no you need to make an order and then my ears focus, like focus ooh, focus ooh. Then, <laughs> but then beats though my ear <laughs> It's like, girl, you need to make your order. Yeah, you haven't heard this before. Get home. So so then, like, in the middle of it, I'm like, I'm so sorry, but 
can you like turn this down? Like, yeah. it's really loud. Gotcha. And and then she's just looking at me like, whoa. I was like, the music is wonderful. I love it. It's just, I can't think. I can't focus. And I'm having, I can't focus. Can't right? focus. So I'm saying it like that. Like, I'm pretty intense, intense. But I'm not yelling at her. Okay. And I'm not, you know, I'm just like, please turn this off. I'm, it's kind of driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. I know. Yeah. So then I... <laughs> Okay, so what's wrong? (laughs) You, me. (laughs) Okay, so (laughs) so then pull it together. (laughs) You got this. (laughs) The way you said me. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Okay, so then it's so loud. And then I'm like, I'm sorry, but you have to turn it down. So she's looking for it, right? But I felt myself like any more seconds, I'd be like, almost like, oh, come on, turn it down. Right. (laughs) She's taking too long. And so finally she turns it down. And when I was telling you this, (laughs) this story, I was like, I felt after, because she's a Latina, um, and and there's me and I was like, did I totally white girl her? Like, did I white oh, girl freak out on her? No, no. <laughs> but then I was like, no, nah, I didn't white girl her. No. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. it wasn't like, hey, what kind of music is that? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> you mind turning it down? <laughs> I can't hear myself think. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. What kind of, who's the artist? Ah, uh-huh, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, That's I never heard of them before. Oh, can you yeah. turn it down? I just really like, you know, I'll make my order. Do you listen to this all day? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you listen to like more, I don't know, like a different music? Hey, those are really shiny shoes. <laughs> <laughs> On a Monday. They're really interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> you mind wearing brown shoes with that suit? Wow. Wow. That's an interesting choice. <laughs> but seriously, turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I Can you open the door? Oh yeah, you're telling me. Oh my god. Yeah, I was telling Shirley earlier that this <laughs> this lady did that at uh Cora when I went to go pick up the breakfast. She just like she just yelled at me like, Can you open the door? I was like, What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm standing next to it, sure. <laughs> but you don't gotta yell. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you ready to take a break? Yes. That's a really cool song. Yeah, it's pretty it's, wild, eh? Yeah. Who's the artist? Uh, it is Sempa the Great. We will have that 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 playlist mm. on spot Spotify. Yes. I don't know why I'm like Spotlight Spotify. <laughs> like, I don't know why. Mm, take a deep breath. <laughs> I think it's because you already recorded a show. Yeah, you know what I mean, so just hum- like, blah, 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 blah. shake my brain, shake my brain <laughs> <laughs> into the Chanilla world. <laughs> So, um, I saw the new Beverly Hills 90210. Okay. Um, I don't know what the hell's going on. Really? I saw... So, basically... Is it as awesome, though? I'm so disappointed. Really? (laughs) (gasps) So, it's like... no. So, the show is... It's like... It's them playing them ugh. okay so they play themselves it's like a heightened version of the actors who played on the show 90210 what? and the actors who are like the the whole cast of 90210 the show is about them coming together and pitching this idea of rebooting Beverly Hills 90210 if that makes what? any sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
So they're not playing the same characters. They're not they're playing themselves. themselves, but a heightened version of themselves. What is a an, heightened version? An, I guess an exaggerated version of themselves. I think so. I think that's it. It's an exaggerated version of themselves. Okay. Who come together because they they were at a like a comic con kind of thing, right? Some kind of a con, and and as they're sitting there. They're all like, um, "Hey guys, why don't we reboot the show?" Pretty much, pretty much, and it's the the journey of getting Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero done. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think that that would work. <laughs> I think it would work. Uh, it doesn't work. The acting. Oh. I mean, <laughs> not like it's not like the acting was anything phenomenal in the first place. On right. in the, you right. know. But at least it had like a, a clear direction, right? Right, okay. yeah. But this is like, first of all, the amount of Vaseline look on this show. What? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, wow, the makeup, right? Like, it's a <laughs> lot. Um, filters, yo. <laughs> but um, I might, so I might, I don't even know. I don't, okay. I don't even remember if I finished episode one. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it, I usually give any Wait new show three you, episodes chance. You can't chance. remember if you finished the first episode. Yeah. Oh, oh. Wait. No, I did. I did. I did. Are you sure? Yes, I sh- I'm sure because the Did you though? I did. I did because <laughs> the girl who plays Andrea at the end, I think. Yeah. She's like at a bar and she right. has a drink. Uh-oh. And this girl kisses her and then she goes Ayo. home to her family. Ayo. With her, like her she has a husband and a child. What? So she's kind of like, "Oh, I did something," but she didn't tell him. Right. So it's like that, you know. Okay. Looks like they're going to tackle some uh, social issues. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Good luck with that. I was reading some stuff that the the cast were kind of like iffy about doing this. Uh, especially, I because, can't see why not. Well, especially because Tori Spelling was like doing reality TV shows for a while. Okay. So they were like, "Oh, this idea is this is not going to come off like a reality TV show, is it? Isn't it? Isn't that?" <laughs> Isn't it supposed to? No, it's not. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. So okay. Okay. I, w- I will give it another two more episodes and okay. then make a decision from there. Okay. But I was re- I was disappointed because I thought... So they're playing heightened versions of the... I love that you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be like them being adults. You know, mm. like... Isn't it though? Oh, you Like meant, as like, in the characters, the characters uh, of 90210. Spoiler uh, alert if you haven't seen this. And, yeah, well, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So I thought that's what it would be. But, yeah. So, so we'll see. Did they even bring up Luke Perry? They did. Okay. They did. They're yeah. like, oh, Luke. They uh, actually said They all sighed at the same time. Like, <sighs> they're like, well. Okay, moving on. <laughs> they, there's a scene where they're kind of like paying a, a quick respect okay. to him. Okay. So, you okay. know, yeah, like, remember, it's very quick, very, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we'll see. Awesome. <laughs> we shall see. That's awesome. Seeing of, of like television. Mm hmm. Um, are you looking forward to see the show, Bob and Abby Shola? Am I looking forward to it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm looking forward to it. I'm curious. Me too. Yeah. That's about it. I'm yeah. curious. I'm not. It could come and go and I could not really care, but. Well, I don't, if it's if it's coming by, like you know what I mean, like if you hear like something's coming through your town, you're like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I'll go check it out. Right, it's kind of like that. Well, you just remind me, I want to get a ticket for something. Thank you for saying that. You're welcome. Um, uh, so basically, it's a show that's going to be on CBS. We didn't talk about this last episode. No, we didn't. No? Okay. Um, so if I don't know if anybody have seen the trailer or anything like that, so Bob, uh. Bob loves Abby Shola is a so Bob is a middle aged compression sock businessman from Detroit. Compression socks. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like a factory thing. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 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 Uh, who unexpected unexpectedly falls for his cardiac nurse while recovering from a heart attack and sets his sight on winning her over. So that's okay. what the show's about. Okay. Yes. And then so, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's about this dude 
who's like, ooh, my nurse, wow. Isn't that a thing, though? Like, isn't that a clinical thing that you like people sometimes fall in love with their nurses, but it's just because they're being taken care of? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, something like, yeah. I thought about that, too, when I saw the trailer. So I'm like, we'll see where they're going with that. Yeah, hopefully they'll address it. So undaunted, Abishola's lack of initial interest, well, she's not interested, basically, right? She's not even picking up the signs at first and Mm. what you see in the trailer, like. Mm. Typical. You know, but this dude seems to show up out of nowhere mm, typical <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> and she's from nigeria so she's like a nigerian mm-hmm. and then her her friends you get to see her friends and stuff like that so okay we'll see where that show so we'll i think we should check it out i got a feeling i know where that head that where that show is headed already but okay <laughs> it's a chonilla couple kind of show okay <laughs> and the guy who produces it, who plays, I believe, Bob, is Chuck Lorre, which yeah. I have no idea who this person is. I was like, who is this guy? Chuck Lorre. Yeah. That name sounds really familiar. So Eddie was like. Wait. So somebody in Wait. our. Wait. What? Chuck Lorre. Well, here. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. So Eddie, who's part of the, who's in the group, uh, said that he is the producer of the show and the actor on the left is oh so wait oh okay so the producer of the show is chuck lorry gotcha. but the guy who acts in it i guess who plays bob his name is billy cardell okay who starred with melissa mccarthy in mike and molly and another chuck lorry pro- uh, produced show are um the big bang theory is a show that he produced and two and a half men. Oh boy. I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to like it. (laughs) And I hope that, you know, even if it had like all the right, you know, tones of social justice, I, I won't be able to watch it just because it's going to, there's going to be a laugh track. Yeah. You can guarantee it. Yeah. Well, you see it in the trailer. Okay. Then it's there. Yeah. 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 So it's that style of sitcom. That's a grind for me. That's a grind. (laughs) Because it, 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 what happens to me, <clears throat> and this is why this is why I prefer shows that don't have that kind of like approach to it. It's because I start to notice the pattern. I yeah. start to see it, and I start, and it just gets boring. It's just like oh, okay, oh, okay. But then when you watch, you know, a show. What was that show that we watched? Uh, the, uh, the one with uh, Jason Bateman, um, the one where he was laundering money. The oh, the uh, the Ozarks. Oh, that yeah. show's holy dope, shit! But you know man, what I'm saying? That show, right? Wow. Like you know, the, like the 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 twists and the turns yeah. and the plot twists, oh and it's like God. what? Yeah. Hey, oh, thank yeah. you for bringing up that yeah. show because I have to. Yeah, try watching that show and then watching Two and a Half Men. <laughs> oh my God! I tried to watch. I tried to watch. Big I think Bang we talked Theory. about I like t- not liking watch... Two and a Half Men. I yeah, couldn't do it. I couldn't pass. I was like, okay. Good. I tried it twice. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Like, yeah, nope, could never. I'm good move forward or continue past season like episode two yeah so we'll we will see but Mm -hmm. i think you i think you're gonna last maybe the first episode and you're gonna be done and i think i'm gonna i'm gonna go for the three episode i like to give shows a chance because usually around the third fourth you start oh okay okay you know yeah yeah so so eddie uh in the group uh had a great idea about us doing a reaction video to it yes i think we should <laughs> i think we should too Let's, green screen we, yeah, we'll reaction yeah we'll do that <laughs> mainly your reaction yeah Okay, Let, maybe both of us. Let's just not watch it until... Because is it, is it out yet? Has it started yet? September 23rd is when it's coming out. Okay, so we'll, we'll have to set a time soon. to come into the studio and, and do that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're going to be like, what the... Hey, well, you know what? We shall see. Yeah, we shall see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's going to be a hot mess. I know it. <laughs> it's okay. It's going to be okay. It's gonna, Actually, no. Who am, I, who am I? We'll see. You know what? I'm going to go in... With open mind and open eyes and an open heart. Liar. <laughs> you ready for a break? Yeah. It's a nice jam, eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, baby. Where are we at right now? So you're reading this book right now. I am. I am. I picked up that book. I talked about it on the last episode. And uh, the book is called The Man They Wanted Me to Be. And it's by Jared Yates Sexton. And I've only gotten through the prologue Mm. right now. uh, But holy cow. Holy cow. I was 
half expecting that this was going to be like an MRA kind of book. What do you mean MRA? Like a men's rights activist kind of book. Oh, okay. So I was like super skeptical. Okay. And so far in the prologue, it's hitting a lot of like very familiar territory. Really? Super familiar territory. Do you have an example? Um, I'll, I'll talk more about that on the next uh, the next uh, time I give the review on the, the upcoming chapter. So in the end, he's going to be like, so I realize I'm trash. I'm so trash. <laughs> I already know I'm trash, but okay. <laughs> but the thing was, is that when I was reading through it, there was one thing that kind of stood out and in the prologue. And basically what they do is they talk about kind of like what the book is about. Mm. Like they'll say like, this book is about this kind of thing, right? So right there, I was kind of like squinting my eyes and reading extra carefully. Mm. Well, listen to this. Mm. Okay. So what this book is about, it's specifically about white patriarchal masculinity. Yeah. And especially potent and toxic system of power and control that has subjugated women and minorities for generations via methodical and or organized um, actions powered by misogyny and racism, a unique brand of maleness that held sway over the United States of America since before its founding. Wow. hey yo, Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm in. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like the cover. Yeah. The cover reminds me very much of Ma- uh, Michael, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I believe. Oh, yeah. A yeah. lot of his covers have that right. similar kind of look. It just Simplistic. kind of you know, just remind, reminds me of all his books like that. So I don't know if it's the same designer or something like that, but mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. They, so far, it's been incredible. It's been like wild to to read into um, from a perspective that it's that I identify with. It's bananas. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I can't wait yeah. to... Uh, he talks about... Uh, Here's some more ex- some yeah, examples. Yeah, there's one uh, thing he talks about, I'm trying to remember it, um, where he says that, like, the the attitude that, like, white males who are, like, really kind of, like, who would adhere to this masculinity thing, mm. they they enter rooms like they could care less, but they're always ready to fight. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. And when I read that, I was like, holy shit. Wow. Yes. It's like a, a careless attitude, but always ready to like throw it down. Wow. Yes. That's crazy. <laughs> yes. And, and the thing is, he describes it as the shell. You know what I mean? It's like it's this, this thing that you carry with you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. It is, man. I think it's going to it's going to help Maybe me I'm gonna learn put why words to things. White men are so scared of black women. <laughs> Because <laughs> maybe the shell, we're the shell breakers. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, yeah. you see it. Oh, yeah. no. Why are you so mad, though? Yeah, you've got I'm that. I'm not mad. I got, just see you're full of shit. <laughs> you got that x ray vision that cuts through masks. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> That's right. Black women, indigenous women, we see the, like, what? Well, see the shell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's some bullshit right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's true. So I'm looking forward to finishing that for sure. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Mm hmm. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. It's time for some news, honey. All right, then. Let's do this. News. News. I like the news. 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 What is in the news? Yay. The news is not bad. (laughs) Sorry. She doesn't sound like that anymore. No. Um, So Ikea apologizes after backlash over jerk chicken with rice and peas dish. What? <laughs> so uh, they, they had that in Canada too. Uh, I think this is in Sweden. Uh, they had. I don't know. I don't know. But if the, it is in Canada, I'm gonna check it out. Yeah, me too. Uh, they face a barrage of online backlash over um, this dish after an image of the meal went viral on social media. The chicken came with white rice and garden peas. What? <laughs> Rice and peas that is traditionally served with jerk chicken are generally understood to be rice cooked with kidney beans, coconut milk, spring onions, garlic, and and thyme. While people on Twitter were quick to express the 
outrage of uh, one customer who posted the image. Um, <laughs> somebody said like, the chicken doesn't look bad, which it doesn't. It actually doesn't look bad. But the rice and peas is killing my soul. <laughs> <laughs> Ikea got the nerve to put green peas in Jamaican rice in Jamaican rice and peas. Mm. So Ikea made like this huge apology, like, oh, okay, oh you know, kind of like we didn't know mm-hmm. and we're going to be learning. But so. we already bought 40 tons of peas. <laughs> we don't know what to do with them now. And a whole bunch of bags of white rice. Oh, my God. So, what are we going to do? Yeah. So, yeah. This is what happens when you don't have people of color on your team, black people or indigenous people or people of color on your team. This is mm-hmm. exactly what happens. hmm Everything turns into rice and peas, white rice and green peas. Exactly. <laughs> um, also, there is a man named um, George Cheadle. He's the black man President Donald Trump once described at a rally as my uh, Amer- African American. Uh, wow. So he's done. He's like fed up with Trump. Okay. Oh, now he's fed up. So after two <laughs> oh, years God. of frustration with the president's rhetoric on race and the lack of diversity in the administration, yeah. Cheadle told PBS NewsHour he had decided to leave the Republican Party and run for a seat in the U.S. House of Representatives as an independent in 2020. Okay. Uh, the 62-year-old real estate broker who supported the Republican approach to the economy said he sees the party as pursuing a pro-white agenda Ooh. and using black people like him as political pawns. Ah. The final straw for Cheeto came when he watched many Republicans defend um, Trump's tweet telling four congressmen of color who are all American citizens to go back to their country. So that was like, no, like that was like too much for Cheeto. Okay. So Cheeto came widely known um, back in June when Trump told... um, Is it congressmen, congresswomen, congress... Congresswomen, sorry. Congresswomen. Congressmen. I don't don't know. Congresswomen of color. I'll have to look it up. Congress women, I mean. So um, so Cheeto became widely known back in June 2016 when Trump uh, was a presidential candidate then. Congressperson. He, sure. Yes, that's better. He pointed to him uh, at a rally in California and said, look at my American, African-American over here. What a jerk. Look at him. Are you the greatest? Oh, my uh, God. What have you got to lose, black people? I mean, Uh, look, there's one guy right here. And he's mine. (laughs) At the time, Cheadle took the president's comment as a joke and laughed along with the president and the crowd of uh, largely white supporters. Now his view at that moment has changed. I'm more critical of it today than I was back then, because today I wonder to what extent he said um, that for political gain or for attention. Really? But... Can't they be both the same thing? <laughs> yeah. Jesus. So, so Cheadle said he's open to voting candidates in any party and will evaluate how their platforms will help African-Americans when deciding who to support in the future. And uh, he'll be, uh, this will be Cheadle's fifth time running for Congress. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Okay. So... Is good he, luck. Good luck. Yeah, question mark. It's probably going to take him a while to get his black card back, though. I think so? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Ontario deficit sits at $7. billion, which is half of what Doug Ford originally claimed. Oh, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Doug Ford oh, is kind of like our, our... He's like a guy who's trying to be like Trump he's, in no, Ontario, he's, in he's, Canada. He's doing exactly what he's, like he's he's got totally. like six guys beside him who are lawyers, and he's like, "Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I Trump do this?" Because Trump does it. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. This invoking the notwithstanding bullshit is like it's so crazy. It's so crazy. What's that? It just means like, from what I understand, it means that they can push law through. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without actually getting it like approved or going through the steps and stuff like that, it just pushes laws through. I'm not exactly sure, but mm. from what I understand, it's it's he's utilizing it in a way that's unethical. 
Hmm. Yeah. We need someone who's like really follow. There's a guy on Twitter. I think I would love to have on the show mm-hmm. who's really like looking at the Canadian politics, particularly in Ontario mm-hmm. and all the the Doug Ford fuckery. Yeah, I follow uh, uh, somebody on Facebook called uh, What's Going On. Okay. Yeah. And and uh, they they talk everything Doug Ford. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. There's another podcast too. I don't know if they're still doing it. I haven't. Oh. Oh yeah, Wag the Doug. Wag the Doug. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the name of the podcast. Yeah, yeah Wag the Doug. Um, yeah, I yeah, I'm gonna see. I don't know. I haven't listened to it. I don't know if they keep posting, but yeah. I'm gonna check it out. Okay. Um, Ontario's budget deficit now stands at seven point four billion, nearly half of the fifteen billion Premier Doug Ford claim he inherited last year from the previous Liberal government. A figure criti- uh, critics have said was vastly inflated like why is that a surprise he's lying <laughs> like this guy's a liar Treas- through and through <laughs> treasury board president peter bethel falvey i don't know and financial finance minister rod phillips gave a financial update friday when the co- government's public ac- uh, government's public account saying the 2018 2019 deficit improved over the 11 11- Point seven billion projection in the spring budget due to higher trend expected uh, higher tr- than expected tax revenues and lower spending. Wow. The premier has overstated the deficit over the last year in order to pursue an ideological agenda of government cuts. Mm-hmm. Green Party leader Mike Sh- uh, Schreiner said in a statement. Interim liberal uh, liberal leader John Frazier accused the government of underestimating the year's revenue in previous financial updates so so that it could now say higher than expected revenue has helped lower the deficit. Doing so could improve the deficit by up to $1.3 billion. The deficit is still projected to be $10.3 billion in 2019 to, uh, to 2020. So many numbers. And the government does not expect the, to balance the budget until after the next provincial election. If the new minister of finance wants to be able to say the government has to reduce the deficit next year, more work needs to be done. Hey, oh. So basically, he's full of shit. He's always full of shit. <laughs> I've heard him referred to as Ugg Ford. Ugg? Yeah, like well, Ugg Ford. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And and I mean we're not too far from an election, like for to vote. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I think I can't wait. I think in November. I can't wait. There was like um. I can't wait. It'll be satisfying. I think there was a debate like a couple of days ago, yeah. yesterday or the day before. I can't remember, but oh yeah, and and the yeah, I think the conservatives are all over like Trudeau not wanting to participate. And, yeah, you know, like, that's right. It's like yeah, but it's it's. That's right. It was the NDP, conservative, yeah. and the Green Party. But I was like, where's the liberal? Where's yeah. Trudeau? Yeah, it's it's being held by a group called the Monk Debates. And they platform Steve Bannon. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Fuck them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <sighs> mm-hmm. They're like centrist assholes. Yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> take another break? Yeah, okay, let's, let's take a break. That. Bible scriptures, nine out two one out. All right, baby, it's that time for Bible scriptures, nine out two one out. Woo! All right. Who are the players? The players tonight are Joshua, mm-hmm. and uh, we talked about Joshua before. Yes, and jo- Joshua, right hand man to Moses, right? Correct. And if you go to a website called According, so if you go to a website called GodQuestions.org, um. Joshua is best known as Moses' second in command who takes over and leads the Israelites into the promised land after Moses' death. Joshua is considered one of the Bible's greatest military leaders for leading the seven-year conquest of the promised land and is often held up as a model for leadership and a source of practical applications on how to be an effective leader. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. It is. Because Joshua followed... And then through learning to follow, yeah. he became a leader. That's correct. At first, I felt for Joshua. Because <laughs> I was like, damn, he's yeah. not being treated right. Yeah. 
So last time I talked about the five Amorite kings who attacked the Gibeonites. Yes. And the sun and the moon standing still in the sky. Um, supposedly, it was the only time that God listened to a human being. Mm. Um, we talked about how the Israelites got their revenge and how Joshua ended up taking over the whole region, right? Okay. Okay. So this uh, this is chapter 11, and I call this the wrong side of genocide. Oh. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, um, let's see. So now we're in the northern region from where all that those battles were taking place. Right. So from what I last I remember, yes. those kings were the locked up. Kings the five kings were locked cave. up in a cave. Big, you got big it. rock. You okay. got this. Yeah. Okay. So, but now they're going to the northern region, and so we're in the northern region. Okay. And king, there's a king named Jabin. And he starts to panic. So he, the king Jabin is, uh, he is the king of a place called, let me see here. So sorry. Uh, anyways, well, it's, it's in my notes there. So, um, <laughs> so they go, he's a northern king. Okay. And he starts to panic and he sends not, him. He's not king of the north like. Uh, no. But, no. But oh. it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because he sends messengers, because <laughs> he because he sends messengers to Oops. all the northern kings, oh, right? Mm. To to warn them about uh, Joshua. So he's a Stark. Uh, I don't know. Okay, maybe. <laughs> um, so he, uh, yeah, he so he sends messages to the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, and the Hivit. Hivites. Okay. So they all get messages from Joshua saying that you know, uh, or yeah, that that he's coming. Okay. So uh, Jabin winds up gathering an army, uh, which the Bible says uh, had as many soldiers as the sands on the seashore. Wow. So there's a lot of people. It was a huge, huge army. Sands of the people? Is that what he said? He's saying, well, what they're saying in the Bible is that there was as many soldiers and chariots oh, as there are sands, sands on the seashore. Got yes. it. Got it. Okay. Mm. So... All the kings who uh, and the Game of Thrones references. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So all the kings who joined Joshua to help him do the the invasion, they set up a, at a camp. Uh, they set up camp at a place called Merom, and it's right next to the water, so that they could prepare prepare for battle uh, against Joshua and the Israelites. Okay, when does the dragon come out? <laughs> oh, soon. <laughs> so. Um, so at the at the same time that they're in this camp, God starts whispering in Joshua's ear. Don't be scared, Josh. You got nothing to worry about. Because by this time tomorrow, you'll have defeated them all. The only thing I need you to do is hamstring all their horses and burn whatever chariots they brought to the fight. Now go get them. So, wow. so Joshua attacks with the Israelites and everybody dies. There's no survivors. Wow. It's, yeah, it's a huge massacre. And they also hamstring the horses and burn all the chariots because God said so. Specifically, God wanted that to happen. Right. Not sure why yet, but maybe they'll let us know. So, uh, but then Joshua, he actually captures uh, uh, the king Jabin. Okay. And he executes him. Um, they then proceed to destroy the entire city of Hazor. Hazor, that's it. King Jabin wow. is the king of the city of Hazor. It's like Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> so they burn the whole city to the ground. With the dragon. Uh, yes, with a dragon. <laughs> and then Joshua starts killing all the kings that had joined Jabin. Ooh. Yeah, and then he destroys all their cities. Mm. Yeah. Joshua mm. is like a genocide machine. He just wow. yeah, He's just like stomping all over these towns and cities it's crazy so it turns out there were multiple cities during this this raid that were placed on mounds like a hill and hazor was actually one of those on the hill and so because joshua had burnt down hazor he didn't burn down or destroy any of the other cities that were on mounds okay 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 so the mount, so the ma the cities that are on mound are not touched. They're okay. Correct. If they're on a mound, they they're, haven't they're been touched cool. unless they're Hazor. Okay. Hazor actually got burnt down. Okay. Yes. Got it. Um. 
so yeah, and so in the cities that they didn't burn down, the Israelites just looted and took everything. Damn. Yeah. They took everything for themselves, and they uh, continued to kill off any survivors that they would find. Yeesh. Yeah. <laughs> Joshua, what happened? Yeah. So uh, the Bible then outlines that this entire genocide was what God told Moses to do. Like, they make a point of saying that in the Bible, that this is what God told Moses to do. But Moses... So he's carrying it forward. Like, he's... Oh, yeah, okay. Like he's carrying on the message to Moses, right? Okay. And then Moses... And which Moses then told Joshua to do. Okay. So Joshua was continuing the legacy of, uh, of, Mo- of Moses to, like, perfection. To okay. Like tea, yeah. Okay. So Joshua winds up taking everything and killing all the kings he'd been at war with. Mm-hmm. The only people he uh, supposedly spared... Uh, are the Hivites who live in a place called Gibeon. These were the dudes who tricked Joshua into the peace treaty. Mm-hmm. Remember, like a long time ago, we talked about that, where these guys came up and they're like, yeah, we got all these moldy bread and we got all this, you know, stuff like that. Can we become like partners and stuff? Remember? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So they tricked Joshua and they're the only ones that were, you know, That's that survived. survived that whole ah, genocide thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hook us up. Yeah, 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 yeah. We gave you some really good. Yeah, so then the Bible tells us that the reason for all this fighting is because God had hardened the hearts of the surrounding kingdoms so that Joshua and the Israelites would wage war and defeat them. So so listen, huh? listen to this, okay? okay? So this is basically like God saying mm. that I'm going to uh, uh, make this person, you know, uh, not like you or me, and I want you, for that reason, I want you to then kill them. Okay. Yeah. But, okay. Yeah, it seems like extra steps. You know, <laughs> God could just remove that person if they wanted to. Okay. Right? I guess he, like, the way that they're explaining it in the Bible is like, it's like Joshua needed this confirmation that he's got this army that can kill everybody. Huh. Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's just doing what God tells him to do. Yes, and God hardened the hearts of all those kings who opposed him. The same way that he hardened the Pharaoh's heart. So so he hardened their heart, or why? Like, he hardened their heart? So Joshua could defeat them. Oh, okay. So he was just basically done with these people, God. He's like, you know what? Yeah. Y'all are on, on my last nerve. Yeah. You're not listening to me. I've tried time out. But, it's, but God did that to them. God made, them, made their hearts hard. Yeah, well, I know, Shirley. Why? I know, I know. He was just fed up. Yeah. He's like, this is too many kids <laughs> to take care of in my life right now. In my spiritual. Hey, kid number four, realm. can you go kill number eight? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so, blah, 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 blah. God like, oh, you're not quite how I pictured Sue. <laughs> so it says in the Bible that uh, Joshua continues to take over even more land after that. So after he had gotten all these, all this stuff and killed all these kings and killed all these people, he kept going. And uh, so he he kept going, but for some reason he spares the lives of the Anakites. Okay. Yeah. What? Who I don't know yet. Who were inside Israel's territory. So because they were inside Israel's territory, they were spared. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and it's the territory they're talking about specifically around Gaza, around uh, Garth, and around Ash- Ashdod. Okay. Yeah. The Bible then tells us this was all the land that had been promised to Moses from the beginning. And from that point, the war stopped. So everyone could, like, you know, finally take a break. Hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm yeah, so... there was a, that 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 was pretty a, as epic as it gets when it comes to wartime. Reading it in the in the Bible, you can have a full Joshua chapter eleven. Yeah, of all this. Yep. So next time we'll go over the list of kings that were defeated by the godly hand of the Israelites. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the lyrics of the song, but I'll try. Ah, best plate and donate. Best bleed do they Best bleed and don't I Best bleed you gotta do need We learned about the book of Joshua.
Joshua. How he killed all those kings. Decide. He's continuing major war. Because God told him so. Pass the plane. By leaving a review on iTunes, five star is truly appreciated. And, um, you know, whichever ones that catch our attentions will be right on the show. You know what I'm saying? Cause you best the plate and donate! So I got a relationship question that I found on the Slate.com. Hit me. Uh, it's called, I found gross Asian fetish porn on my boyfriend's oh, computer. Oh, I read this. You did? Okay, so this person is Asian. I'm yes. Asian. Let's start off with that. Mm-hmm. I'm a straight Asian woman. I don't know why I said it like that. In her mid-20s, in, um, who has been dating a white man in his late 20s. For almost two years. Mm -hmm. We have a very stable relationship. We have a healthy amount of sex. We like each other's friends and we never fight. We recently took the step to move in together and it has been going well. We purchase a computer together to share when we work from home. We both work in an industry that requires a specific kind of machine. Yesterday... I was on the computer and opened the web browser. It opened a private window. It hasn't, uh, he hasn't closed with many tabs of porn open, uh, many tabs of porn open. Okay. Uh, that's just sloppy surfing. I, of course, <laughs> <laughs> I, of course, don't care what he watches when he watches porn, but I noticed that the porn was quite brutal involving domination He's very sweet and vanilla in bed with me, and especially domination of Asian women by white men. Whoa. I'm I'm well aware of the kinds of fetishes men can have towards Asian women from Mm -hmm. college dating, Mm -hmm. but my boyfriend has never shown any signs of this. Should I be worried? I know porn can be fantasies, but the nature of the porn has me wondering if there are layers to my boyfriend I don't know about. Yeah, she needs to just address it. Yeah. Yeah. You need to talk about it. Yeah. Just say, hey, I found some of your porn. Yeah. Like, are you into this? Yeah. Is this something you want to, like, should yeah. we, like, do you we want to talk- me to do this? Yeah, we need to talk about this because it's a little bit of a red flag right now. Yeah. Like, I yeah. want to make sure this is not some kind of systemic, you know, sexual racism thing. <laughs> You know what I mean? This is mm-hmm. not some kind of like, yeah, you have to investigate and mm-hmm. make sure that that's not it. Yeah. You yeah. know, because you don't want to come to the surface like, well, you know, I got with you because Asian women are like this. And that's the reason <laughs> why, you know, I don't want to name any weird stereotypes. But yeah, like, yeah, I know he, she. Yeah. She, aren't you supposed to be submissive? <laughs> Ugh. Right? Yeah. Like. You don't want one. Yeah, you have to talk about this. Yes. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. That. yeah. You're like, okay. All so- things considered, I, I, you know, people can watch what they want to watch. It's it's fine. Yeah. As long as it's, you know, consenting, enthusiastic, all that. Um, But yeah, there's context here that needs to, uh, some follow-up in my opinion. Well, for sure. Because it's not like, yeah, it's one thing if he was kind, they were kind of doing it. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. No, she needs to talk about it. Yeah. Because you don't want some weird stuff and be mm-hmm. like, aren't you supposed to be submissive? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yikes. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. What would you <laughs> do, what if, I do what? if you found like... I wouldn't watch porn on a shared computer. That's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> what if you found out that I'm watching videos of me dominating, like domination porn of white, like I'm a black, like all these black women dominating white men. Yeah. And they're like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be like, why are you holding back? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm here for it. <laughs> the whole suit and everything? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, I'm thinking of the, because I said the whole suit and everything. This mm-hmm. makes me think of that, that scene on Pose. Uh, Remember when they, they have a girl's trip to like, um, <laughs> to the Hamptons? 
and they stay at that guy's house. Right. And the guy stays in the garage. Right. All, all tied up with like. Right. <laughs> and he's totally like, oh, longer. Yeah. I like, I love being secluded. Are you, are you going to leave me here for the weekend? So good. <laughs> She's like, but how are you going to go to the bathroom? It's okay. He's like, it's okay. I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh my gosh. And he's smiling the whole time. Like, yeah. 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 He's like, are you going to leave me here more mistress? She's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There's true. there's enthusiastic consent right there. <laughs> enthusiastic yeah. consent. Get it. Get that's it. That's true. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. That this it's it's definitely grounds to have a con- you need to have a conversation. I would think so. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. And and you'd be like, this is something you want me to do and this is something you want me to do and what are we comfortable with? But most importantly the conversation is uh, I hope you don't think you don't have some weird ideas of Asian women and submission. Yeah, and maybe because she. Maybe, if so we yeah. have a problem. Yeah, I think that needs to be talked. <laughs> That's about. the number one thing you need to talk about before you yeah. get into the second part of like, all right, yeah. now we know you're not some some inverted, you know, racism or stereotype stereotype racist. Yeah. Let's talk about fantasy. Yeah. 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 Anywho. It was interesting. Mm-hmm. That's it for uh, violent, violent porn. Scares me. Yeah. Yeah. Creeps me out. Yeah. Same here. I don't. It's like a power thing, and I'm not. Yeah. You know, that's like a power trip kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it was interesting. Like going back to that show, Pose. Right. <laughs> Pose is so good. <laughs> How I was like, I was, you know, because I, I think there's a scene where she asks him, like, "Why are you into this?" You yeah. know. Yeah. And you get the sense, like. Maybe you'll learn this through the book yeah. of being Maybe, a white yeah. male and this idea that you're supposed to be always on top and this hierarchy and stuff yeah. like that. And then there's this sense like he just wants to like let shed, let all that go. Yeah. He wants to fall down the hierarchy like Plinko in like for the <laughs> prices, right? Like plink, 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 yes. plink, plink, plink. <laughs> yeah. And that's why he's like into the whole submission yeah. and being tied and bonded and shit. And Damn. Yeah. This, yeah. So, yeah. Anywho. Different strokes. For different folks. All right. Well, that's, Move the world. That's it for, for the show, honey. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. don't have sure. anything left? No, not, not, not really. There are some great other articles that you can check out in the group. If you go to, uh, if you just search for the Chonilla podcast group uh, on Facebook, you'll, you'll find all, not just the articles that we just talked about but things like uh jolie king and mark firkin the bloggers drone that arrested that were arrested in iran because they flew a drone and they were in prison for about 10 weeks oh my god i mean you're in iran okay (sighs) They, they don't value rights as as much as why would you fly a drone there? I mean, maybe, I'm, maybe I, it's a beautiful country. Yes, yes, true. But by now, in 2019, yeah, you should know that there are li- like each country's and places have licenses or op or have different rules for drones. How did he get it in the country? Because mm, mm-hmm. I've heard of people trying to bring their drones into certain countries, and they're like, "Nope." Like I've heard of people trying to bring their uh, drones into Cuba. Nope. Oh, you can't? Not in Cuba? I've heard of people trying to bring drones into countries, and you would think that Iran is one of those countries that are like, no. Mm. But who knows? Okay. It's a white guy? White guy Uh, and... (laughs) What's this? Oh, it's a camera. Okay. (laughs) Come on in. (laughs) You you seem heartless, like young 20-something-year-old bloggers. It's fine. Starbucks is just two blocks away. <laughs> Welcome to our run. Uh, you'll also see articles like the one you shared about um, H Town dealing with racists. Oh, with Hamilton, yeah. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Again, go on iTunes, leave a review. Um, it's a great way for not only for us to see what you think of the show, but other people to to discover the Chonilla podcast. Uh, feel free to follow the group, the Chonilla Podcast Facebook group. Chloe and I interact a whole lot there. Um, <laughs> and email us, chonillalove at gmail.com if you have any relationship questions. Um, and we're always 
open to showcase beautiful Chonilla couples of the world and read your love story of how you met and uh, what did your family think about you guys uh, being together or gals or people together. Chonilla love stories for the win. Whoop, whoop. Yes. Do you have a quote? What's the quote for tonight, baby? Okay. So the quote is, we do a great disservice to boys in how we raise them. We stifle the humanity of boys. We define masculinity in a very narrow way. Masculinity is a hard, small cage, and we put boys inside this cage. Damn. Mm-hmm. That was by, I'm going to mess her name up, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Yes, yes. She's the author of We Should All Be Feminists. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. She's in um, that clip in uh, Feminists. In that Beyonce song, you know, uh, flawless. Okay, she's that's her. It's her voice. Yeah, okay, that's her. cool. Yeah, Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. <laughs> Tune right. in next time for me to explore more of my trashy, toxic masculinity. Oh, and yeah. don't, don't forget to tell your friends about the show. We appreciate that. Peace. Wait, you're still listening to podcasts? Well, if you love this episode of the Trinola Podcast so much. Just head over to iTunes or Spotify to subscribe and leave a review, I guess.